Good evening, everyone. Uh, first of all, let me thank uh, the Aussies team, Adarmesh sir and Tejas, for uh, inviting us and giving us uh, an opportunity to interact uh, with you people. Now, uh, let's let's uh, sort of make this an interactive session because you know, 3:30 is a time after having food, you know, uh, you know, sleep, dozing off comes in. So let's let's uh, you know. I would like to first ask you as to have you heard about PT? Great. Uh, a few things which I would like to know from you. What have you heard about PT? Yeah, no problem. If it is a wrong answer, no problem. There is no assessment here. So you can definitely go to Australia if your answer is wrong. Yeah, go ahead. Couple of things, please. PSL test of English. Yes, PSL test of English. What is it used for? Computer-based exam. It's a computer-based exam, correct. Four modules. Uh, okay. Anything else? All are taken at same time. Sorry? All are taken at same time. Yes. Yeah, correct. Online, online. Yeah, so there are people who have got a lot of information about PT. I'm glad about that. Now, uh, PT is uh, an exam which uh, is a completely computer-based test. And uh, this has got all four skills, listening, speaking, reading, and writing in one go. You know, this is not a traditional test like the way we do in schools and colleges, where we use uh, pen and paper. Here, what happens is, Pearson has adopted to technology and we have, uh, you know, pumped in a lot of money uh, into making up a model or bringing up a model like a computer-based test. Okay, we have done tests in different countries, taking samples of uh, students uh, who speak different language. Like, uh, as you all know, our language is not English. Our mother tongue is something different, right? And uh, the second language which we use is English. So that is the one particular reason why when we go to countries like Australia, they want to know what is our language proficiency. Okay, because once we are there, it is difficult for them uh, to understand. Or for example, for us to, uh, when we go to a particular country, for example, uh, we, if we don't know the language, we, don't, we won't be able to go to a store and buy something. We won't be able to, like they just said, if you want a foster bear, you cannot say Kemchu and go there because the Aussie guy doesn't understand that, isn't it? So we have to know their culture, as the uh, sir said. Uh, there are quite a lot of understanding. And when the first language of that particular country is English, it is important for, <laughs> from our part to uh, know more about it. Now, PT is uh, a test which is uh, almost, uh, you know, 100% recognized when it comes to academic and we also have uh, for immigration purpose, uh, you know, recognition in Australia. And uh, it is a computer-based test, as I said, and all four skills, listening, speaking, reading, writing, all four skills are tested in one go. That is, you enter for a test at 9 o'clock, by 12 o'clock, your all skills are assessed by the computer itself. And the best part of this test is that you get result maximum in five working days time. <coughs> okay. And uh, when you say about the dates, uh, dates are available. Uh, you know, if you want to take the test next week, I would say I'll be more than happy if you don't find the dates, I can, I can get you the dates. There is absolutely no problem in getting the dates. And uh, the sub skills, for example, if I take a test, then I get to know listening, speaking, reading, writing, and also the sub skills. You know, there are at times we, we know that we are good in writing, but, or we, do, we know that we are good in speaking, but we don't know what is it that the real problem which I have is. Is it the vocabulary? Is it the grammar? Is it uh, sub, sub skills? So it is not only the four skills, the main skills, listening, speaking, reading, and writing that gives uh, you know, the, the result when it comes. It is not only this four skills. You get a sub skill scores, you know. This will help you clearly judge as to what is your weakness or and what is your strength so that when you first give the test or you know when you prepare for the test you can certainly uh, focus because i am saying this because we have a uh, you know a test which is as equivalent to a, a live test and which will give you the score okay it's called a practice test and this will help you as i said to know what is your actual weaknesses and strengths so that you can particularly work on that particular area and you can strengthen yourself. Okay. Now uh, that is about the test. Now uh, it is it is uh, it is more of now questions coming in uh, so that I can also sort of understand as to what is uh, you know you have told me a couple of things. But is there any particular question if anyone has got? 
uh, about PTE? What study? 37.6 points. Yeah. 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 See, uh, if you if uh, if it is a six band, if uh, the requirement is six band, it is a 52 in uh, PTE. You know, you have to have a 52 score. That is how it is. And the scoring, good that you asked that question. Now, uh, the scoring when it comes to PTE is between 10 and 90. It is not a zero and a hundred. Okay. Uh, the reason being, what uh, Pearson believe is that every candidate knows a bit, little bit of English. You know, because we study, even if it is a Gujarati, there are many English words which we use in our, uh, you know, daily life. Right, telephone, you know, there are many words. So we believe that we know a little bit of English and no one is an expert in English. You know, there is always a scope for improvement. So we scale it between 10 and 90. And, uh, you know, there are different, I can, I can send you the comparison list, you know, what is uh, a six band. As I said, 52 is the most criteria when it comes to, uh, you know, immigration, isn't it, Dharmesh, sir? Yeah. yeah, correct. So that's it. Uh, yeah, any more questions? Because I actually, I was given 10 minutes time, so I think uh, now it's more of a question. Yeah, please, yeah. Why should I choose PD or LS? Now, uh, there are several reasons. As I said, for you, a paper-based exam is quite easy. Because you know, though if, if you know the language, and if you are a little bit of, uh, you know, practiced, then it's for easy for you to uh, clear an IELTS. But for you to get a dates on IELTS is a little difficult. What is the waiting period, sir, now? Three months? Three months? Okay. As I said, I can get IDP you the dates. Yeah. IDP is quicker, but it yeah. is So it takes, you know, you have a waiting period of two to three months' time when it comes to IELTS. But when it comes to PT, if you want to take the test in another three, four days' time, there are dates available. Because we work, I mean, we have dates 365 days. So, you know, if there is anything which is, uh, you know, lagging behind, uh, when it, I mean, to say, if there is something which is stopping you, if it is just the language test, you just can jump into PT. Because there is recognition in particular skill which you are applying for, then why to simply wait for two months? You know, where you're wasting time. And as I said, it is not just your four skills. You will get to know your sub skills and your score. And the pattern of the test is very important. You know, it, is, uh, it starts with uh, a read aloud session. And what I have, I have personally taken a PT. And what I've noticed is, uh, you get to a comfort zone. You know, when you, when you do an IELTS test, what happens is I have an examiner sitting in front of me and the nervousness sticks in, you know. There is a lot of nervous because, uh, you know, it's a group discussion uh, and there is an examiner sitting who doesn't have much of an expression on his face. So you get nervous, right? So here what happens is you are speaking to a computer. So when there is something written on the computer for you to read, it is not a difficult task. Okay, so gradually what happens is you get to a comfort zone and then you s realize the situation that things are under my control. That is very important when it comes to a test. And what history says, you know, so far what we have seen is there are candidates who are taking n number of times IELTS and when they take the uh, uh, PT test in first attempt, they clear. It is nothing that, you know, uh, there is, it is just the pattern of exam which changes and the model of questions. It is very friendly. And in the books which we provide, you know, there are, uh, there is an official guide which has got three unscored tests in it. If you go and if you're good in English and if you go and click, uh, you know, if you know where to go and click what, it is easy for you to clear a PTE because this is not my version. This is some, uh, you know, somewhat like uh, the consultants and the language trainers who has uh, themselves given us a feedback. Yeah. How does the... Yeah. So how does a jury member judge the writing part? If the whole process is being taken care by computer, then what about writing? And yeah, now uh, it is completely, as I said, it's a computer-based test. There is no human intervention at all. Uh, now, let me tell you, when a, there, is a, there is something called, uh, you know, standard error uh, method, you know, or a standard uh, me measurement of some SEM kind of a thing, which says that, in, it's a classical theory, which says that any... Uh, test has got an element of error in it. You know, the observed result and the element of error combines is what the result which we get. Okay, here what happens is uh, when it comes to PT, the amount of error is very less because there is no human intervention. For example, if there is a IELTS test taken, if there are 25 papers which a person has to correct, the first paper when he corrects and when he corrects the 25th paper, it is not the same energy, it is not the same concentration. It is not the same, you know, that 
that uh, energy kind of a thing which is so there is a bias right here what happens is as i said there are millions of uh, you know uh, amount of money which is pumped into this particular model of uh, assessment which uh, which uh, pearson has come up with so that and this is a proven theory that the amount of error when it comes to pte is very less that is how uh, it is a proven test yeah i think so this is the last one question which i would take because there there is lot more to go ahead yeah i think so yeah yeah, yeah it, it, Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Because uh, that's where we started off with academic. It is not only in Australia, but New Zealand, uh, Canada, UK, US. All these countries have started accepting PTE, and it is uh, Australia for you know it's hundred percent. So the students who are going for Australia for academic purpose, they can uh, blindly go ahead with uh, PTE. Yeah, I stop here, and I'll be here. Uh, you know, if you have further question, I'll be more than happy to address. So I'll hand over back uh, to the minister. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Actually, uh, Austria has started like to accept PT in la recent few years, like uh, and gradually all the skill assessment authority has also started to accept the PT. You know, and uh, if you'll go on a forums, uh, basically if you if you still uh, concern about like okay, what to what to do, IELTS or PT, I, I, I will suggest you one thing. It's uh, the reasons what uh, Sir Faraz Sir has explained. Like it makes sense and it, it it is it is the reality, and that's the reason. Like in the recent days, PT has become a more and more popular. If you'll go on a forums and you'll read a lot of views the like real real experienced people who gone through the exam both IELTS and PD and what they want to say you know I think that will be good because if you just do a little bit of research you will come to know that like which exam you should take and as far as it's uh, in terms of immigration uh, uh, like from point of view immigration Austrian immigration department accepts PD for hundred percent only the concern is like different skill assessment authority you to, then you have to understand like if your skill assessment authority doesn't require any English language test then you'll be fine with the PD and if your skill assessment authority requires specific English language test then you have to understand that like which language is requ uh, is uh, uh, required in that if it's a PD is acceptable then you can go with the PD as well okay so <coughs> all right we will start with the point test now in a point test uh, the the first criteria is the age you know uh, now immigration has uh, put the 25 25 to 32 years of age as the highest point achiever the reason because they knows like this age bracket is the people like with the right qualification and good experience you know which they require gradually as the age is going uh, growing you know the people has like less ten tender of life life live to work as a skilled worker into that australia you know so they are focusing more into that bracket which is a uh, more appropriate for them now in here like it's 18 to 24 years which is a 25 uh, 25 to 32 it's 30 33 39 25 uh, and 40 to 45 years is 15 now there's one catch you know uh, if someone is like uh, has completed uh, 24 years and uh, if the 25th years is running uh, what do you think like what score he will get 25 and the reason because if you see the bracket 18 to 24 it means if you complete 18 years then only like you will get the 25 points the same thing you just have to pick up the first line 18 so you have to complete 18 and before that no point the same thing 25 it means you when you will complete 25 then only you are eligible for 30 points until you will not complete 25 year you will not be eligible for uh, 30 points you know so that is the one thing which you have to measure into your uh, calculation and most of the time like we are, you, when you are on a border these things makes very uh, critical question you know in english language requirement uh, as uh, ielts pd and toefl uh, is acceptable uh, competent english uh, has no points but still you need it uh, i will uh, not go into like comparison chart as i don't have it but yes uh, we have give you the brochure in that brochure there is a comparison chart okay which will explain you like the uh, point test requirement uh, sorry english language requirement as per the department of immigration now in competent english it's a double uh, it's, it's a zero point it, it, it's all six band each seven band each proficient english you will get 10 points 
and superior English 8 band each, you will get 20 points. I'll tell you, like when, because when we used to talk about the uh, peers, and I'll tell you, like, if you are so good in English, try for PT, you know, because as Sir has explained, because there is a very uh, less error uh, kind of thing. Like, we have seen many people are able to get the score 8 into PT, whereas they are not able to get the score uh, in uh, IELTS. It's not like they're not able to get the score, but many after many times uh, tried in the IELTS, uh, many, many cases we have seen who has achieved that score into Pearson. And you can get this kind of information or the real experience stories on uh, uh, blogs and uh, forums if you want to read it, okay? So if you are so good, I will prefer if there is, uh, there is option to go for PT or IELTS, you should go for PT. Uh, <coughs> in skill employment, it's a three years of an experience requirement, which helps you to get five points, five years, 10 points, eight years, 15 points. Now, this skill experience requirement must be within last 10 years. It means like from the date of application in last 10 years, whatever your experience is there, and some authorities actually directing your skill experience while they are actually assessing your skill. Uh, skill. So you have to understand if they are actually directing your experience, it means like rest of the experience will be considered for the point test purpose. Like uh, I will give you an example, like Veta says they deduct one year of an experience. So if you have like five years of an experience in that particular occupation from the date of application, and if the Veta says is considering one year of an experience for the skill assessment, they will mention that like this one year of an experience will be not considered for the point test purpose. It means you have only four years, you cannot claim five years for 10 points, you, you will be only eligible, entitled for the five points. This is the very simple things, but if you will miscalculate this thing and in express of interest, you put your whole fire of an experience, it's okay. You will be 65 points rather than 60. You will get an invitation, but when you'll get an invitation, officer will refuse your application because they will say you have put in a wrong information. So this is a very silly thing, which can turn your application into the refusal. And it also needs expertise. And that's the reason, like it's not just any agent, they just know the process and they will deal or you are confident because each and every single single things there are thousands of scenario which you have to be careful it's all simple but it all needs just like little attention and expertise okay <coughs> Austin employment, uh, it's, a, it's a similar like but one, one, one to three years of an experience, it's five points and three to five years of an experience, like not five years, uh, one to two years of an experience, five points, three to four years of an experience, 10 points and more than five to seven, like five years of an experience, 15 points and more than eight years of an experience, 20 points. So uh, again, like Austin employment has little bit of more uh, points uh, in, in terms of uh, the duration period. Uh, reason obviously they value their experience uh, in terms of point test and uh, they, they want those people f to give first approach to have actually real Austrian experience so that, that's only logic behind it okay qualification qualification can be any overseas qualification will be acceptable okay if you have a diploma or ITI you will be entitled for 10 points if you have a bachelor or above you will be entitled for 15 points and if you have a PhD you will be entitled for 20 points now in this when we say like overseas qualification is acceptable and bachelor, it means that bachelor qualification must be assessed equivalent to Australian degree. It's okay if the qualification is from India, but the qualification level must be equivalent to the Australian bachelor level. I will tell you the things. Australia has one database which is uh, called like CP, uh, country education profile, CEP. Now in this country education profile, they have assessed around the world all the universities and they have placed the rank one two three okay so based on that ranking whatever the course qualification is delivered they are actually assessing the level of equivalency for that particular qualification i'll tell you in 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 uh, in uh, uh, gujarat only ms university and uh, i think sunit uh, those are the universities who are in level one rest of the university are level two or three in that case if you are doing a three years of bachelor degree and your overall score is 50% below, below than 50% that your qualification will not be considered as equivalent to Austrian bachelor degree. I'll give you an example. If you have done like bachelor of commerce from Gujarat University and not more than that, uh, apart from that you haven't done anything and your overall average score is like less than 50, then I'll tell you Gujarat University is not in assessment level one. If 
you have done the three years of degree from Gujarat University, then your score, overall score must be more than 50 points to consider that qualification equivalent to the Austrian bachelor. Now what will happen, say for example, somehow you are managing all those things and you are claiming the wrong points into the skill, uh, skill select. Again, you will be in trouble because you never understood that like what level of your qualification will be considered in terms of the point test. Okay, so it again needs expertise and I, as I said that like it needs a lot of uh, information to dig out and to, uh, to research, you know, when you are actually assessing the application. Uh, study in Australia, uh, it's, it's, it's to value their uh, Australian study and to encourage the student visa program, Australian government has placed five points for uh, uh, students who are actually studying in Australia for two years, you know. So more than two years if you study in Australia and have a qualification uh, from Australian, uh, Australian university or institutes, you will be entitled for five points. There is nothing that like, okay, in how long before, you know, doesn't matter. Even in the past, whenever you have got the Australian qualification which has uh, more than two years of duration, you will be entitled for five points. No, uh, nomination and state sponsorship uh, as I said like in 190 visa in 190 visa sometimes say for example if your occupation is in SOL is a part of SOL alright and uh, you have just 55 points with by your own and uh, to claim one, uh, 189 visa, you need 60 points, but you are short for five points. But in that case, if you think that like you are satisfying the criteria of any of the state, because as I said, if your occupation is as well, it means that like, it will be in demand of whole over the Australia. It means that one of the particular state also demands you as well. And if that state demands you and you are satisfying that criteria, you will be entitled for five more points, which will help you 55 plus five is equal to 60. And you will get the straight away invitation because you are not in a queue because you are applying for 190 visa where, where, where there is no queue and uh, you will be eligible for PR. 190 visa is again a permanent residency. It's only the thing because state helps you to get the sponsorship and uh, apply for a permanent visa. They're expecting you to spend in early, early life of your two years into that particular state while you are actually migrating into Australia. Okay, and that is just uh, like uh, one of the formal agreement. Uh, in, it's a part of the application. Okay. Regional, uh, regional, relative or regional state sponsorship, like uh, as I said, 489 visa. If you are short for 10 points, then there is no option f for you to la left without going to 489. Obviously, no one wants to go into 489 until it is like forced situation, you know. If you are short for 10 points, you will work it out your options uh, where if regional area is sponsoring you, you can get 10 points and you complete 60 points uh, point test and you will go for 489 visa. 489 visa is not permanent visa, it's a temporary visa. It is a visa for four years where if you will stay in that particular regional area for two years and you work in any field, any field means not just your nominated occupation one field, in any field you just have to work 35 hours per week uh, in a paid position and uh, uh, for one year and if you live in that area for two years while the, your duration is for four years of that visa later on you'll be eligible for permanent visa which is called 887 uh, uh, like uh, it's uh, 887 visa that's a permanent visa but this 489 visa is a uh, like temporary visa it's not permanent visa and it leads toward the permanent residency with the very easy criteria to satisfy the purpose of 489 visa is to develop the regional area that's the reason like regional authority when they're helping you to get that application done they are forcing you to stay two years into that particular regional area you know what i mean okay and it helps you to get 10 points as well so it doesn't matter you have just a 50 points you may will get an opportunity to go there on temporary visa which leads toward the permanent visa right the same thing in a relative sponsorship if you are relatives lives in a designated area now regional area and designated area has a different list so just be don't be confused with those things okay designated Mel Melbourne is a part of designated area which is surprising but it is there okay so if your relatives lives in Melbourne but not Sydney Newcastle Brisbane Perth and uh, like uh, um, uh, one more city I forget the name so uh, but not those cities, you know. So if your relatives lives in, uh, Aust in Melbourne and they are permanent resident over there, they can help you into relative sponsored, uh, sponsored visa and can help you to get the 10 points. But again, remember the golden rule. Your occupation must be on SOL to claim the relative sponsorship. Because if your occupation is not on SOL and it's on CSL, then only you can have option of 190 and 489 regional sponsored visa, not the relative sponsored one. Okay. 
other factors uh, it's a, a credential community language uh, if you want to note down it's a nati and double a t i nati is a like national authority for uh, national accreditation authority for translator and interpreter now that authority is actually issuing the certificates and license to the people who are working as an interpreter and tr official translator so means if you have uh, documents in other language you want to translate into english in australia they are well uh, like valid people whose certification will be accepted as a translator okay uh, as uh, mr tejas has explained there are like more than 240 languages uh, are going on so if say for example your parents are there and they want to apply for a, a license a driving license now they don't understand like you know w uh, language there is a language barrier so they, they can request the uh, interpreter where the interpreter knows gujarati and english and they can help them to complete the driving test you know whatever the question will be in english they will just ask him in gujarati and the same thing so it's it's a very good thing and to uh, encourage uh, such kind of uh, like multiculturalism austrian government also emphasizes on this uh, criteria as well where they are actually helping five points for the people who are taking this uh, credentials you know uh study in regional australia again to develop the regional area like they they are giving the five more points to the students who are actually taking that two years of study into regional area rather than choosing the melbourne sydney and bigger cities okay uh partner skill qualification now in partner skill qualification if your occupation is in as well then your wife's occupation must be as well now how will define that in as well your wife also need to get the skill assessment okay and then only you can define that yes how his occupation is into the as well right if your occupation is in csl then your spouse can have the occupation into csl but the condition is that they also need to have uh i'll score six band each to be to 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 claim this five points for uh, partner skill professional Austra professional program this program is for only engineer site in accounting i won't go much into here because this program is for only onshore students who will complete that two years of study and during the post study work rights they can go for this program and claim five points for that that toward uh, migration pathways okay so this was uh, this was uh, about the point test uh now i will go with the faq use like uh, in uh, for express from interest which type of skill visa required to lodge eoi now uh, almost all those visa what i have explained you know required to lodge express from interest because even you will be nominated by the state you have to have put express from interest into the system and then the state will send you an invitation rather than the department's automatic computer system okay because state is inviting you in instead of that queue thing Uh, how many points required to qualify for skill select i already explained it's a 60 points which is a minimum requirement okay so if you are sponsored by the state state helping you for 5 points you should have like your own 55 points and combine it will become a 60 if you are applying 189 you should have your own 60 points if you are applying for a regional sponsor visa you should have your own 50 points and 10 points for the regional area and 60 related sponsor 50 plus 10 60 but 60 is a minimum requirement to uh, register your express of interest into the system is there any fees needed to pay at the time i already explained the logic behind eoi okay and there is no fees for express from interest so you don't need to pay anything to register your interest but yes you should have all the criteria to be readily available while you are actually putting your interest into the system because when the invitation will be issue okay your information will become a freeze it means whatever you explain you have to prove that thing afterward you can't say that okay i i mentioned seven band here and you you have the invitation and later on you are going into ielts exam and you get the seven score and you say sir i have a seven score they not going to accept it your ielts date must be before the date of invitation okay so once the invitation will be there your information will be free so whatever the information you are putting into the system it must be uh, current and uh, like uh, you should have the criteria to be satisfied beforehand you know while you are putting those information into the system because if the invitation will be there then you cannot uh, like uh, justify those criteria on a later date okay so if you are putting your occupation as something you should have the valid skill assessment later on the date of invitation after that if the later expires you don't need to worry because at the time of uh, invitation you had a valid skill assessment later it means that 3 years bar okay if your later is uh, supposed uh, uh, about to expire in next week and today you got an invitation it's okay after that doesn't matter you your your uh, uh, 
in uh, skill assessment will expire officer will still honor your invitation uh, skill assessment because it was valid at the time of invitation you understand okay <coughs> how long ui is valid for after lodgement uh, as i already explained it's a two year how long it will takes to get an invitation no one can tell you because how many people in that particular occupation will lodge then uh, expert of interest during that particular time no one knows you know but still we can tell you based on our experience that like how long it will take but it can be the approximate time you cannot take it for granted uh, can we update any details in EOI after lodgement? Yes, you can update. As I explained, if you'll update just the information which will not change your score, okay, your EOI will be considered as the date of lodgement. Uh, but uh, if you, uh, 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 if your score will be changed, then the new effective dates will be considered when the point score was changed. Okay, and it can be upper or lower as well. Okay, so if you have 65 points and somehow you cross the age, okay then your score will become a 60 points and you'll be considered as a new date okay so that is the thing uh, can we lodge more than one ui at the same time yes you can lodge as many as ui uh, in fact like many people are just uh, putting the ui for fun because there is no fees so there is no point you know that like anyone's created an account and anyone's lodging information but it should not uh, misuse the system uh, uh, as it can be trouble but yeah you can lodge as many as you are what uh, if you are eligible for two occupation you still can apply two different occupation with the two ui because in one ui you can only nominate one occupation you cannot nominate two occupations so sometimes you are eligible for two occupation you can parallel apply two ui okay and sometime in a couple case if you think that like your wife is also eligible and you are eligible okay then you can also apply two ui separately making the prime primary applicant individual person all right uh, are there any uh, negative effects in uh, my future visa application if I never get invited in a previous UI? As I said, it's a computer system. If you are not invite, uh, invited, it means that like they were, they were not required. You know what I mean? Maybe like all the time there was other people with the higher score who was in the system and you never got an invitation. It doesn't make any uh, difference to your pre uh, future application if you'll be invited one after two years. If your UI expires and you apply another UI, you get invitation. It won't make any difference to your application state sponsorship as i said that like uh, in 189 and 489 related sponsorship there is no role of state but if you are your occupation is on as well or c as well but you are if you are short for five points most of the time there is no other option left uh, except going through the state sponsorship if you are short for five points i will say okay doesn't matter you are a mechanical engineer if you cannot claim that five points uh, you cannot get that more five points then why don't you waste your uh, why don't you do go for a state sponsorship and claim that five points and be eligible for 190 visa rather than going for 189 visa okay the same thing if you are short for 10 points there is no other option left uh, apart from like applying for 489 visa okay and uh, uh, in a state nomination, the beauty is that you don't need to be in a queue. If you will get a state nomination, you will get the invitation straight away. So you can at least justify because in a state, they justify that like what process, what time they will take, you know, uh, to send you an invitation. But yes, in a state sponsorship, one thing is that their occupation list change frequently. Okay, so you have to keep updating yourself. I think uh, I will cover that thing into my next slide, uh, which is FAQ. What is the state migration plan in Australia? As I said, like, you know, uh, state, each, each and every single state, uh, because SOL has the occupation list which is in demand in Australia. But in a state migration plan, state has also uh, required occupation list, which may not be like uh, uh, demand in demand in throughout Australia due to their specific nature of industry in that particular state. What they do is like they bargain those occupation with the federal government and they get it approved like on the CSOL by sending the recommendation to the ABS, you know, and they, this is how like they are trying to put those occupation on the CSOL. So in future, what if the uh, if anyone wants to apply into that category, that state can help them to uh, get the permanent residency under the CSOL quota and that person will spend their initial period of time into that state, which will help the state to sort uh, complete their shortage of the skill. Okay, now uh, what are the requirements to be met while applying a state nomination application? As the state also has the similar kind of requirement, you know, some state says like, okay, I need this kind of, uh, th this occupation is a part of, uh, in part of demand because obviously you will go to the state nomination uh, stage when you'll have the skill assessment readily available. So your occupation must be in that list. 
then they also uh, require some time of uh, uh, experience. So they say, okay, in this occupation, I need this much of an experience. You have to satisfy that. They may can have like English language criteria as well. Sometimes they also ask you to make research, enough research, why you will go into that state. Basically, it's uh, your intention to settle into that state and you should have like enough research about that state before you will uh, go there, you know. And that's that's what state expect before you lodge an application. So state's criteria can be vary. And there are different states has a different occupation and different uh, category uh, it can be it can be anything so what you need to do is like first if you have the requirement of the state sponsorship then you have to choose that like which state is eligible for your occupation to sponsor and then you have to understand the criteria for that particular occupation in that particular state okay this is the best thing which you can do like to understand your eligibility for the state sponsorship how often state occupation list update throughout the year because state has no control, like they, they have their own own demands and requirements. You know, if they, they reach to the level, they change the occupation list. If they, they get uh, like more applications, the particular uh, 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 occupations, they again like they change the list. So the list can be changed anytime throughout the year. But what you can do is like, if you have your occupation set into mind, you can frequently change the, all the state's criteria and for first occupation list. And if that occupation, if that occupation list uh, contains your occupation and then you can go for the criteria to understand are you eligible for that or not okay so the f state's occupation list can be changed anytime whereas SOL and CSOL change once in a year every July okay how can we know that when will my occupation reopen in that state if it is in a closed status as it, it only can be uh, explained based on experience. There is no specific statistic we can uh, uh, analyze, you know, to tell you this thing. It's just based on our experience, like because we know many states how frequently they change their occupation and, and insert and uh, close the occupation. We can tell you a little bit from our experience. Again, you cannot take it for granted, but no one can tell that thing because it uh, it is again uh, demand versus supply rule you know state if state is reached to that level they will wait for the next intake or next uh, 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 next level of time when they will be start to fill the shortage of that occupation in that particular state okay how much processing time it will take to complete the application the processing time can be vary it's it's like from 14 days to like uh, three to three to four months as well so it again it's a state requirements each and every single state mention on their website that like how long it takes for the state migration application to be processed how long state nomination letter is valid for uh, most of the cases the state nomination letter is valid for from like uh, 14 days to 90 days you know uh, Again, like when you will be nominated by the state, they will just tell you that like, okay, why don't you apply your uh, uh, expression of interest sometime later on or sometime they, they, if your expression of later interest is there, they will just issue the letter of nomination and you just have to sign and accept that nomination as a part of that agreement that like you will spend two years of time into that state in, uh, initially, you know, and then they send you the invitation. So this process requires you to uh, complete it within the 14 days to 90 days, you know. So it's again like depends on the state to state requirement. But this is the thing like 14 days to 90 days, it's nothing. It's just like because once you get the nomination, you have to make decision. Yeah, I want to go and you just have to complete the formality and you'll be okay. Okay. How much does it cost to apply for state sponsorship? It's from zero to $700. Uh, some states, uh, uh, like mainly New, New South Wales regional authorities, they are charging nearly $700, uh, whereas like uh, many states like Victoria and uh, other states, they, they don't charge anything, you know. So price can be varied, depend on which state your occupation is in demand. So if your occupation is in demand in a kind of state where there is no fees for the state state's mo nomination application, there is no charge. And if your occupation is in those state where there is a charge for the process, yes, you have to pay for the charge. But it, it can be varied from zero dollar to seven hundred dollars okay do we need to provide a job offer letter from Austrian employer while applying for a state nomination? Yes, uh, some state actually demands that as well. If it is a part of the criteria of that state nomination, you have to. 
and uh, it is obviously like uh, very uh, very hard it's not easy because as i said that like why someone will offer you a job when you are here you know what i mean and you don't have the visa status and the same thing is going to apply over there as well but uh, state still de demands because still thinks that if the occupation is in too much shorts you know then employer will help you to uh, offer you the job and that offer later will justify your reasons to stay in that state you know what i mean so uh, but it it is a very rare requirement in a very rare uh, state so you don't need to worry about it but yes it can be okay can my spouse live and work in that state as a dependent? Yes, uh, in general skill migration, Austria has a beauty that like if uh, you can uh, uh, migrate uh, along with your uh, uh, like whole family and the family means your wife and children, okay? Like uh, your brother, sister, mother, father cannot migrate along with you unless they are uh, really dependent on you. It means uh, if they, for their survival and for everything, if they are depending on you, if you can justify that thing, yes, they can also migrate with you, but it is not that easy to uh, prove it, it needs a lot of documentation uh, to justify those things all right uh, can my children go to school in that state or not obviously because you are actually about to settle over there and Austrian government do all the welfares in terms of like your settlement you know in fact like they also help you uh, to, uh, in early days like by providing the consultation and the guidance like how you can settle and how you can manage yourself easily to settle in that country so your children can go to school that, that's not the problem uh, once I received my state nomination approval, how soon will I get the invitation to apply for a visa application? As I said, uh, as soon as you uh, get the state nomination approval, uh, it's just a part of the process. So within 14 days, whenever you complete that formality, what is the requirement of the state to come like, like accept that nomination? Okay, uh, you will get the straight up invitation. So there is no queue, no waiting for that. As soon as you accept it, they, they will uh, you know within within a very next day or maybe like in seven days, they will uh, as per their will they will just issue the invitation okay benefits to permanent resident in Australia now uh, uh, benefits of permanent resident uh, it's like vast, right? It's just like a small section we have covered over here. It's access to Medicare. It means like free and subsidized treatment at public hospitals and uh, pr practitioners as well as health insurance covers and center links. So uh, Medicare, uh, it's just like, you know, you get the free medical services. You don't need to get the insurance uh, apart from like very few services, which is like dentals and uh, stuff. But in a most of the critical care, you can get like free medical services to the public hospital. If you want to go for private, yes, you need to have like insurance, private insurance with you. Okay. Uh, government gives the payments such as family tax benefit, child care benefits and child care rebates to help. Yes, uh, uh, Australian government has like very good welfare program for their citizen and permanent resident. And, uh, uh, most of the benefits what citizen has uh, those benefits extended to the permanent resident as well as they are also contributing toward the country's economy so uh, uh, this all kind of benefits you will be uh, entitled to get if you want to know more about this like you can visit the center link website it's a centerlink.go.au uh, this uh, department is uh, actually uh, responsible for all such welfare you know what i mean so being a permanent resident what kind of benefits and what extensive level of benefit you can get through the government you can get all those information through the website of centerlink.go.au okay uh, Austrian board children will automatically be citizen uh, and get benefits yes if you are permanent resident and you, if your child born in australia they will become a austrian citizen and uh, that there is also a lot of benefits uh, in in terms of like you know the child bonds and they they gives you like a, a parental uh, uh, like wel welfare uh, money also if uh, your wife is working and because she has to take a leave she is also getting like uh, uh, benefits of that uh, leaves from the government so there is a lo lot of uh, this such kind of uh, benefits being a permanent resident in Australia. Crisis payment, yes, if you if you have a hardship, they will help you. Multilingual uh, phone service, as I said, that like if you, 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 you your wife or your parents, uh, if they are not com com competent in uh, English and they need some kind of help in their own language, in most of the department, like they can request for the interpreter and they will help with that thing. Uh, 
sponsor related and rights as i as in a related sponsor visa category you are getting someone who can sponsor you now in relatives who can sponsor brother sister mother father grandparents cousin and uh, uncle aunt okay these are the relatives who can sponsor you as the relatives so this should be the first uh, f f first uh, relatives like uncle and aunt must be first uncle and aunt uh, not like uh, cousin uncle and aunt okay uh, and, and the same thing will happen when you will become a permanent resident. You can sponsor your relatives. You know, in that particular category, if they are the skilled people and they are short for the 10 points. You can also help them. Uh, travel opportunity, obviously, uh, as being not as a being a permanent resident because as being a permanent resident, still you will be the citizen of India. Okay, so you will not get that entitlement to travel in any countries uh, uh, on arrival uh, because Austria has like uh, more than 150 countries on arrival visa platform being a citizen. So if you are a citizen of Australia, you can travel in most of the countries uh, visa free if you want to travel there for at least 30 to 90 days for the holiday purpose, you know, whereas like being a citizen of India or any other countries like you have to apply for that visa. Uh, that's the beauty of like Austrian passport is so powerful it like uh, uh, like like six or seven like it's in top five powerful passport six yeah yes in sixth rank yeah powerful passport in the world you know so that's the thing yeah but it, being a permanent resident obviously like if you will apply for a visitor visa in many countries they will they knows that like you are permanent resident of australia and they will actually help you to get the visitor visa okay that's that's the benefit now in costing factor uh, it's it, it 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 can be varied through the skill assessment authority through the like your requirement of the state sponsorship or any other thing all right so uh, we have calculated just approximately costing for one applicant it can be 3.5 lakhs to 4.5 lakhs uh, sorry 4.1 uh, 4.15 lakhs uh, for one plus one means like if you have a spouse and you want to apply then it can be 4.5 to 5.5 uh, and if you have a, like uh, 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 wife and child, then it can be like 4.95 to 5.5 lakhs. So this is the overall expense, including like immigration fees and our service charge as well. Okay, uh, which will uh, give you like overall idea about your costing factor. This is again not accurate as it's just approximate figure because your situation depends on which authority, which state, like this, this, these are the whole lot of things as well. Okay. Employment reference, yes. Uh, as there is always a question, as I told you, that like you have a question that like which uh, job opportunity is there, you know. So why you need to ask question to someone else? You can go on the job portals. You can research these job portals and can verify that like what kind of demand is there. One thing you understand simple. This program is a skilled program. It means if your skill is in shortage over there, that's the reason they are actually granting you the permanent residency. So it's a simple logic. Your demand is always there. But still, how you will relate yourself to the required company, it depends on your hard work, you know, how hard uh, you work to find the job into that particular position and how you'll find that company who's actually in searching of you as well, you know. So right approach and right hard work will help you to get a job. And you can just get an idea about uh, your job demands through this job portals, which are the very popular, just like uh, here in knockery.com and stuff. Okay. Uh, this is the income statistic of different occupation. We just uh, got a little bit of uh, a few of the occupations, okay, which we are actually dealing frequently. Uh, and the source is uh, like www.abs.gov.au as this is the government department who actually gather and analyze all the data from the country. So this is a very accurate source uh, in terms of uh, explaining you uh, the source of income and stuff. So you can note down www.abs.goe.au. This website is the responsible for the SOL and CSO list. They have the prepared this NJRS co, uh, code, you know. So this is the one thing. Uh, step to consider before choosing the right immigration consultant. Yeah. Now, uh, simple thing I'll tell you. If you will see, uh, like, uh, immigration website, there will be there, there will be mentioned that like if you want to choose the immigration consultant, then you should choose the consultant uh, register with Mara. Now this is a compulsory requirement in Australia. Outside of Australia, it's not a compulsory requirement. And and uh, you know again, like I'll tell you, I'm, I by myself is a Mara agent. Okay, and being the Mara agent, you will be expert. It is again not compulsory because it's all about like how much pa like uh, uh, passion about the. Or profession you take, how much you care about your business, it, it is a requirement, you know, so 
you understand like if you are an engineer and you are good engineer it, it doesn't mean that like you just clear the uh, uh, qualification and you are a good engineer there are a lot of people who are not engineer and can be good so i don't justify the things that like okay we are just because of mara agent we are the best one you know uh, because uh, i have seen many mara agent who are uh, also not up to the uh, level yes uh, there is a lot of compliance and things which justify the ethics but in terms of knowledge you, you cannot justify them you know so uh, you have to understand that like whenever you choose some someone uh, considering the uh, as your immigration consultant you have to see that like what, what uh, if they are a mara yes there is one thing they are compliant you know what i mean if there is something wrong goes obviously there is there is a registration authority who can take an action against them and their registration can be cancelled you know but uh, apart from that you have to understand the research ex expertise how good they are in terms of research how good they are in terms of keeping themselves up to date you know uh, with the information and uh, things uh, industry recognition yes as much of as, as industry recognition will be there they have more compliance so we are migration we are member of migration institute of australia we are member of migration alliance so as much as industry recognition we have we have more compliance the, it, it has nothing to do with our expertise okay but yes it has certainly have everything to do with our ethics and uh, like our intention because if it goes wrong with our intention we will not be able to satisfy those industry recognition into the market okay uh, Community bonding uh, and overall rating on Facebook or Google Plus. Okay, I'll tell you this is a very plus point for us, and I always take a proud to explain this. Now you know uh, now nowadays in a social media uh, time, obviously like most of you people come to know about this seminar through the social media, and uh, you understand this that like uh, in social media, almost each and every single company is doing a marketing. All right, and we do the same. but we have one more feature which is a review section which is open and we have more than 1200 uh, five star ratings in because we have a global page and we have more than 160 thousands of fans follower into our page and we have two global pages uh, which is like one is oasis.asia and one is a uh, oasis now if you go on those website you will find that review we have a 4.5 star overall rating with 12 more than 1200 five star ratings with the comments and those are the real profile you can verify those profiles so we, it's not we have like few testimonials on our website writing randomly or oh, thank you very much this and that it's the real review the people who has been served by us you know what i mean and i challenge that like you cannot find more than us any this much of review in any website you know so there is two things when you go with the small organization you have to understand it because it's a long process all right the person can be expert and he can be ethically good but what if something happens to those small organizations uh, hierarchy that means i uh, we have problem we have seen many cases where you know that person who is actually assisting the people they get migrate themselves so who's going to take care of those cases you know the people feel abandoned in a small small agencies there is a problem in a large agency the problem is with the quality and that's where we take proud because even expanding ourselves into the large agency we have maintained our level where we have like more than 1200 five star ratings which has been given online which is verifiable and i challenge if anyone can find more than these ratings i will do your visa application for free you just have to find and i'm talking about australia Australian immigration and education doesn't matter it's education or immigration you just find more than us five star rating you want to note down the uh, facebook page just note down it's www.facebook.com/ausssizz and why i'm telling you this because it's a verifiable things i'm not saying we are the number one it's a verifiable thing you can verify it and you can understand that like okay how much efforts we take to train our staff to keep this attitude alive you know to make research and expertise up to the mark so we can keep our attitude on that level so that is the one thing second thing you can search about complaints on google because many time people if they are not happy they would have made complaints against the agents on to the google you know so you can because of sometimes people are not says by they are not do they can't do as much about the agencies but they at least sometimes they write down their real time experience you know yes uh, uh, i'm not sure but this can be happen like one or two experience with like thousands of cases can be bad because after all we are also human it can happen but 
you have to compare overall ratio because you can't go with the 100% surety and I'll tell you there is no 100% surety with anyone even department of immigration makes mistake we have revised many decisions from the department of immigration's officer where they are actually making the mistakes into decision you know but because we knows the rule we argue with them and we change the decision so it happens with ev everyone but overall ratio you have to see that like okay what kind of complaints level is there and what kind of appreciation is there and what kind of level of business they have done out of 10 if there is no complaint and out of 1000 there is one complaint it, certainly you understand what, what, what I'm trying to explain you know so that is the one thing and uh, it's a it's an offer of our seminar uh, like any everyone who has uh, attended this seminar obviously we have your database and uh, if you will uh, register yourself uh, for uh, immigration process with us in within next next uh, end of saturday yeah saturday is the last working days for next week so within a week uh, you will be entitled for 5% uh, discount as we are we are working in the fixed fixed price structure format like uh, we can offer this thing so it's not about that like okay after a week you will ask for five percent and we'll offer you it's not going to certainly happen because we have very strict pricing policy all right so uh this five percent special discount will be there till next saturday uh, if you will register yourself uh, for the immigration process uh after attending this seminar all right so uh i'm going to uh conclude this seminar here uh Obviously, there's our contact details. If anyone wants to take a picture, you can take a picture uh, for your record. And you can also visit our website, aussiesgroup.com, uh, and you can find our contact details as well. Now, I'm, I'm going to conclude the seminar. And uh, now, I will, I will ask you guys like to ask the questions. And my immigration team will be able to assist you with your question and answer. OK, thank you very much. <laughs>